Question 17. A is the point 2, negative 5. B is the point 4, negative 9. We need to show that the gradient of the straight line passes, passing through A and B is negative 2. So, in order to show this, um, we need to work out the gradient using the change in Y divided by the change in X. Um, and I know that's going to be equal to, well, the change in y is going to be negative 9 take away negative 5. And the change in x is going to be 4 take away 2. And that's going to be equal to, well, negative 9 take away negative 5. That's going to be the same as negative 9 plus 5, which is negative 4 and 4 take away 2 is 2, and negative 4 divided by 2 is going to be equal to negative 2. Okay, um, and, and that's what we've been trying to show. Part B, C is the point negative 301, 601. Does C lie on the straight line passing through A and B? And we need to show working out. So what I'm going to do here is a few ways of doing this, but I'm going to work out the general equation of the line. So I know that um, Y is going to be equal to negative 2X plus C. That's the gradient, negative 2, which we've worked out, plus some other value that we don't know at the moment. Now, I'm going to use one of these points over here to work out what that C is. So I'm going to say when X is 2, I know that when X is 2, Y is equal to negative 5. So when X is equal to 2, Y is equal to negative 5. Okay, I know that's going to be true. So I can substitute that into this equation here to work out what this value of C is going to be. So when X is 2, y is negative 5, so I'll plug that in. I've got negative 5 is equal to negative 2 times 2, which is negative 4, plus c. So therefore, if I add 4 to both sides here, negative 5 plus 4 is going to be negative 1. So that tells me that c is going to be equal to negative 1. Okay, so I can now write down this general equation as a particular equation using c is equal to negative 1. So that means that y is equal to negative 2x take away 1. So the equation of the line that passes through these points is y is equal to negative 2x take away 1. Um, and I want to check to see whether this is going to lie on this line. So I'm going to see what happens when x is equal to negative 301, and I'm going to see whether that gives me a y value of 601. So I'm going to say y is equal to negative 2 times by negative 301. Take away 1. y is equal to negative 2 times negative 301 is going to be a positive 602. So I'm going to have 602 take away 1, which is equal to 601. So we can see that we've actually got that value there, which means that, yes, it does lie on the line. So we can say our answer is going to be, yes, it does. Question 18. Bottles of drink are for sale at three shops. The normal price of a bottle is the same at each shop. So shop A, you buy one bottle, get two more bottles at half price. At shop B, you buy two bottles, get three more bottles at half price. And at shop C, it's simply 30% off a bottle. What is the cheapest way to buy exactly eight bottles? You can buy from more than one shop, so that's important, and we need to show our working out. So because we don't know the price of a bottle, um, we just know that it's always going to be the same, we're going to assume that um, one bottle costs one pound, because that just keeps all of our calculations nice and simple. Okay, so uh, shop A, Um, well, I can buy um, three bottles 
I buy one bottle for one pound and I get two more at half price. So those three bottles are going to cost me two pounds. Yeah, one pound for that bottle and one pound for the other two bottles. So three bottles cost two pounds. Okay, and uh, shop B. Well, I can get two, I have to buy two bottles and I'll get three more at half price. So that's going to be two pounds and another one pound fifty. So that's going to be three pounds fifty for five bottles. So five bottles cost three pound fifty okay and uh, shop C um, I can buy individual bottles so I know that I get 30% off so one bottle costs and it's going to be 70p or zero pound 70 okay right so I want to buy eight bottles. Now, if you have a look at shop B, if five bottles cost three pounds fifty, then that works out to be what the cost of one bottle works out to be three pounds fifty divided by five, which is seventy p. So actually, shop B and shop C are selling their bottles at the same price. The advantage of shop C is I can buy individual bottles. I can only get that cost at shop B if I buy the, the five bottles at that price. So I'm going to say that at shop B, the um, average cost is 70p. So average the average cost is 70p. Okay, um, and at shop C, the average cost is also going to be 70p, but that's just the cost per bottle anyway. Shop A, we've got three bottles at £2, so the average cost here is going to be when I want to do £2 divided by 3, and £2 divided by 3 is going to be about 67p, so I'm going to say the average 66.6 .6 recurring 2 divided by 3, so the average is going to be about... Zero pound sixty-seven. So um, at the moment, um, it looks like our best shop is going to be shop A because that's going to have the lowest average cost. However, in order to get this price, I need to buy three bottles that cost two pounds. So the most I can buy, because I want to buy exactly eight bottles, the most that I can buy from shop A is going to be six bottles for four pounds. Okay, so I definitely want to get those six bottles for four pounds. I can't buy the nine bottles because I need exactly eight bottles. So I'm going to start by saying, well, um, I want to get um, six bottles from shop A. Okay. And, um, and then I need another two bottles and it doesn't matter where I get these from. However, in shop B, I have to buy five bottles to get that average cost. So I am going to have to go to shop C and get two bottles for 70p each. So I'm going to get six bottles from A and two bottles from C. Okay, so that's going to be six, sorry, um, Six bottles is going to cost me four pounds, so it's going to be two times two pounds plus the two bottles from shop C, which is going to be two times zero pounds seventy. Okay, so that's going to be four pounds plus one pound forty, and that's going to be equal to five pounds forty so um the cheapest way to buy exactly eight bottles is going to be six from 
a and two from C. Question 19. Here is some information about the marks of 60 students in a test. So we've got nine students that scored between 40 and 50. We've got 16 students that scored between 50 and 60, etc. On the grid, we need to draw a cumulative frequency graph. Okay, we've got a separate table here, and we're going to use this to um, put in our cumulative frequency um, separately. So we're still going to have our marks over here, which is M, but over here we're not, now we're going to have our cumulative frequency that I'm going to label CF. So my marks, um, because I'm working at the cumulative frequency, I want to um, get a running total of marks. So I want, in this first part, um, all of the marks that are less than or equal to 50. So I'm going to have M is less than or equal to 50. Let's just thin my pen out a little bit. Okay, and then over here I'm going to have M is less than or equal to 60. M is less than or equal to 70. M is less than or equal to 80 and M is less than or equal to 90. Okay, so my cumulative frequency over here, well, I know that nine students scored less than or equal to 50 marks. So over here, I'm going to have nine. So the number of students that scored less than or equal to 60 is going to be all of the students in this group and all of the students in this group. So I'm going to do 16 plus nine, which is 25. Less than or equal to 70 will be all of these students and these and these. So that's 25 and another 20, which is 45, etc. So that's going to be 8 and 45, which is 53, and 7 and 53, which is 60. Okay, and that matches the 60 over here. So we now need to draw the cumulative frequency graph. So I'm going to plot this 50 against this 9 over here. So I start by saying, well, n there's no students that got less than or equal to 40. So I'm going to start with my 40 over here and I'm going to mark that at zero. Okay, because I know no students got less than or equal to 40. Nine students got less than or equal to 50. So I'll mark a point at 50 and nine. And then 60 and 25. Seventy and forty-five, eighteen fifty-three, one, two, three, and ninety and sixty. Let's try that again. Nineteen sixty. There. Okay, and then I should have a smooth curve that goes through all of these points. Okay, um, and your curve is probably going to be a little bit smoother than mine. Okay, um, the question in part B says, use your graph to estimate the lowest mark of the top 20% of students. So, the top 20% of students, because there's 60 students, 10% um, of 60 is 6, 20% of 60 is 12, so we're looking for the top 12 students. So if I go back over here, the top 12 students are going to be the students above 48. So I'm going to draw a line that goes across from do it in blue. Okay, so I'm going to draw a line that goes across from 48. So I think that's there. Let's try that again. Oops, try that again. So 48 is in fact here. I'm going to go across there and down there, and I'm going to read off that value 
and I make that 71, 72, 73. So usual graph to estimate the lowest mark of the top 20% of students. Um, the answer there is going to be 73. Obviously, your graph may look slightly different to mine because mine's a little bit wonky. Um, but I've just checked on the mark scheme, and, and you should you're, you're allowed any answer between 73 and 75. So as long as you've got an answer between 73 and 75, um, you should be okay. Okay, question 20. We need to work out the diameter of the circle x squared plus y squared is equal to 64. So if I write this again as x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and that would be 8 squared in this case because 8 squared is 64, that tells me the radius is going to be 8. So the diameter of the circle is going to be 2 times the radius, so it's going to be 16. So that would have been the radius, but because we're asking for the diameter here, you need to do double the radius, so that's going to be 16.